Welcome back into the channel. What goes in to making an elite quarterback? That's what we're going to look at today. First off, we got to do an intro. What's up? We're back. South Harmon, glad you're here today. Just letting you know. We're going to start this video series off right with our new editor, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Brian's doing some incredible work for us. Really excited to see what he can do and grow the channel. But today, we're going to look at that next group of quarterbacks. Who's the elite guys who are almost right there? The guys we all value in Dynasty Leagues, but just can't quite be Josh Allen or Jalen Hurts or Patrick Mahomes. Never fear, though. These guys have incredible amounts of value. If you've been following along, we did what was called the Quarterback Framework Show for the 4D Chess Podcast. We looked at the elite guys over the last five years and to judge them as elite i set up a basic vanilla scoring league 12 team super flex four point passing touchdown start 10 lineup league and i looked at the last five years 2019 to 2023 and figured out who were the guys who were above 2.0 warp who are the guys who finished as those league winning quarterbacks that we all covet in super flex and we dove into what made them elite what made them score so many fans fantasy points so much warp that made you dominate the league what did that look like statistically how can we wrap our heads around what goes into making an elite quarterback and i think we figured it out but the question still remained what made that next tier those 1b guys those guys where you really like and if you had them as your qb1 you're doing all right you're holding serve you're right in there with them and heaven forbid if you had one of these guys as your qb2 oh baby did you dominate your leagues so essentially what we're looking at is 1.5 warp to that two 2.0 threshold. I went back, made the same spreadsheet, dove into the same data, but just looked at that next tier down, that next group of guys. And what I found out, what I'm about to tell you, is that it's very interesting. It follows a lot of the same principles as those elite quarterbacks with a few caveats. So at the end of the video, I'll give you those guys for 2024, the guys you should be looking at and you should be interested in based on this. Let's start it off. What was the sample size? What were the quarterbacks that I looked at? In 2023, the guys who fit this category, Jordan Love, Patrick Mahomes, Brock Purdy. 2022, Trevor Lawrence, Geno Smith, Kirk Cousins, Justin Fields. You remember how bad Justin Fields' start of the season was too? And then he just came on like gangbusters at the end. That elite rushing upside, that elite ceiling. Actually finished with a 20.5 fantasy points per game. So if you care about those kind of things and points per game, which I'm not saying you're wrong if you do, I'm just telling you warp is the way of the future. Join on the train. 2021, we had a much bigger sample size, a much bigger group of quarterbacks who fit this threshold. Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, Matt Stafford, Jalen Hurts, Joe Burrow, Aaron Rodgers. And then if we look at 2020, the COVID year... <laughs> Things were crazy. We only had three guys fit that category, but Lamar Jackson, Justin Herbert, Tom Brady, and then 2019, Russell Wilson, Jameis Winston, and Deshaun Watson. So all these guys came in, fit this category of 1.5 warp to 2.0 warp. They were all like that next group. They didn't make the elite tier 2.0 cutoff, but they were very close. They fell somewhere in there. So what does this actually look like? Let's look at the actual data on it. Let's look at what the warp average was for the elite guys. And if you listen to the video, you'll know that was was about a 2.28 warp the elite guys who fit this threshold were this next group of guys they average about 1.68 warp not a bad fall off i know some people though a half a game is a big deal in the warp world a half a win that's a big thing but still very very good what about fantasy points per game the elite guys scored at a clip of about 23.7 fantasy points per game 23.8 if you'd like to round up this next group of guys they scored at 20.56 about a three points per game difference when adam and i talked and we discussed this episode we gave you the pass yard average what the rushing yard average was how many rushing touchdowns did they have in a season how many passing touchdowns i did the same thing for this group of players and what i found was average passing yards 4169 passing yards that was their average rushing yards they ran for about 350 yards on average rushing touchdowns 3.58 and then passing touchdowns 30.58 but we do have some outliers some guys that don't really fit the bill and I'm looking at the two different data sets we had exactly 19 quarterbacks in each category 19 quarterbacks fit the bill for the last five years of being 2.0 warp or higher we had 19 quarterbacks this year this category 
fit the bill for being a 1.5 warp to a 2.0 warp. 19, both categories, very interesting. But there was some key differences. So we had six running quarterbacks. Running quarterbacks meaning that they had over 400 yards rushing in a season. We had six running quarterbacks in the elite territory. Six of the 19 were guys who had over 400 yards rushing. In this one, we only had four. So just a minor difference. You can chalk that up to a little bit of variance, but it is a fall off. The key one that stood out to me is in the elite category, when Adam and I looked at it, we only had two quarterbacks. Two quarterbacks, Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers, were the pure pocket passers. The pure pocket passers, meaning guys that had less than 200 yards rushing in their season, that they fit that category. This one, on the other hand, five. Five rushing quarterbacks. Tom Brady, again, came in there with his 2020 season. Kirk Cousins is going to be in that mix. Aaron Rodgers would be in that mix. Matt Stafford would be in that mix. I thought it very interesting that the dissimilarities between the two happen to be with the spread of rushers versus the spread of guys who are more traditional pocket passers. Not as mobile. Could add some in the rushing game, but definitely not a Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson type where there's three, 400 yard kind of guys on the ground. They're really in the kind of statues that we think of. So I also divided them into these running outliers. Either you had 400 yards rushing or you did not. So if I just look at running outlier quarterbacks, so the list that I gave you of all those quarterbacks, if I just look at the running outlier, meaning that they had less than 4,000 yards passing, the guys who fit that bill, they averaged under 3,000 yards passing. Can't get too much closer than that. Somebody's closer! Their rushing yards, on the other hand, was 835.75 rushing yards. So about 836 rushing yards is what they averaged on the ground. The rushing touchdowns, they put in exactly eight rushing touchdowns on average. And their passing touchdowns, they threw for 21.25 passing touchdowns. When I first looked at this, I was shocked. I was like, this is not a very high bar, which is why Justin Fields, Jalen Hurts, etc., had made this list as rushing outlier quarterbacks because the bar is set so low low if you can run the football as a quarterback for fantasy football purposes. You get so many points for running the ball for 30, 40, 50 yards a game and putting in maybe one touchdown on the ground. You get such a leg up over your competition that the bar is incredibly low. Now what's the bar even to be that 1B type for the guys who don't run the football, who have less than 400 rushing yards in a season? The passing outlier stats, 4,507 passing yards. You got to throw for 4,500 yards. Do yourself a favor and go back to last year in 2023, albeit a down year for quarterbacks, I understand. But ask yourself, how many guys threw for 4,500 yards last year? Not many. Not many. Rushing yards. They still had to put up on average 229 rushing yards. So you still had to be incredibly mobile. Now, they're guys that didn't hit this threshold. That's why it's an average. But those guys exceeded in other stats. Maybe through the air, through more yards passing. Or maybe it was an incredible amount of touchdowns that they threw. Tom Brady-esque. Rushing touchdowns. The passing outlier guys still put in 2.36 rushing touchdowns on the ground. So somewhere between that two and three rushing touchdown range. And then passing touchdown wise, you had to put in 32.79, meaning that you were between 32 and 33 passing touchdowns on average. While the bar came down for these kind of quarterbacks, while the bar lowered for these kind of quarterbacks from being elite to the 1B types, the very, very close guys, it's still incredibly hard to do it in fantasy football if you're not mobile. So if you look at it, some of the biggest differences between total average, if I just look at the baseline average of both sample size, you got to throw for about 200 yards difference between elite and the next guy. 200 yards. So 4,300 yards to be elite. Call it 4,150, 4,170 for the next year. Rushing yards comes down. 500 yards was the average for the elite guys. 350 yards is the average for the next year. Rushing touchdowns came from 6.32 down to 3.58. So we almost cut that thing right in half. And then your passing touchdowns came down by somewhere between three and four. If you wanted to do it as a running outlier, and this was the key one that I looked at and why I value mobile quarterbacks so damn much in fantasy these days. The passing yards for elite one was 3,692 on the elite side. On the rushing side, I just told you it's less than 3,000. You don't have to be even a really good passer. You can have a Justin Fields 2,200 yard season to fit into that next tier. So when I looked at this whole thing and the comparison to it, I'm still on board. If you want those rushing quarterbacks, those are the guys who can provide that elite ceiling. But even if it's guys we have question marks about, guys that we're curious 
if they can adapt to the NFL, if they can adapt their passing game to the NFL, if they can fit the ball in tight windows, if they can be prolific in the passing game, maybe they're not the most accurate. They got more question marks coming out of college. If they have a rushing floor, you want them because your floor all of a sudden is now the very good, the very, very good. So what does this all mean for 2024? Mike, you just gave me a ton of stats. It's a bunch of mumble jumble. What this means for 2024 is there's some guys I'm very, very in on and very in on at cost. Anthony Richardson, for example. Anthony Richardson, if you were to put him in this 2024 draft class, by a lot of people's accounts or metrics, he would go after Caleb Williams, which is insane to me. Caleb is a great prospect, but he at best is probably in that three, 400 yard rushing range in the NFL. Anthony Richardson very well could be in that 800 yard rushing range. He could be a double digit threat for touchdowns on the ground. And you'll ask Mike, what about his passing? I'm telling you the passing doesn't even matter. 3,000 yards is the bar he has to hit. I think with Michael Pittman Jr., Adonai Mitchell, Josh Downs, Jonathan Taylor out of the backfield, and that amalgamation of a tight end room, Anthony Richardson could hit that. Jaden Daniels, for example. We talked about it on the 4D pod, why I prefer Jaden Daniels over Caleb Williams. This is the reason why. Jaden Daniels can step in and run for 800 yards in his rookie year. Hell, we just watched him in the SEC go over 1,000. In a college football game that punishes you for the amount of sack yards you take, that goes against your rushing total. Does not affect you in the NFL taking sacks or rushing yards anyways. J.J. McCarthy. We didn't really see it at Michigan, but by all accounts, J.J. McCarthy is a very prolific athlete. J.J. McCarthy, if he is struggling in his passing game, may take off and run, and he may surprise us to the tune of a former quarterback that not everybody was as high on, had some NFL tools, and then really surprised us with the amount of rushing that he did in the NFL, Daniel Jones. Now, before you get grossed out, Daniel Jones also makes the list. <laughs> Daniel Jones at cost. If he can hold on to the job, he is dirt cheap. I think the last time I looked on Keep Trade Cut, Daniel Jones was way down there, almost in the 30s, 28, 29, somewhere in that range. If Daniel Jones holds on to a job and comes out, Daniel Jones' floor is very high. Now, albeit his bottom could fall out, at any given moment. I'm not telling you to go out and spend a first round pick on Daniel Jones. I'm not telling you to go out there and give up an early second or trade your Michael Penix or Bo Nix for Daniel Jones. Don't do that. Can't do it. But if you can get Daniel Jones for the 208, 209, maybe a couple thirds, maybe a third in a juice quarterback, somebody in that range, I'd be interested to see if I could pick up some cheap Daniel Jones because in 2024, I might get some cheap fantasy production because Daniel Jones does run. A couple other guys that make the list, Bo Nix could possibly finish somewhere in that four or 500 yard rushing range. The rest of the offense isn't very good. His wide receivers aren't very good. By all accounts, the offensive line is suspect, just kind of middling. Bo Nix has athleticism, and Bo Nix has shown the propensity to run the football, and I think maybe that gets exasperated a little bit more in the NFL. Gets accentuated a little bit more. One of these days, I'll find the right words for it. And then Deshaun Watson. This is a guy who's made the list not only one as an elite quarterback, but he's also made it as that next tier of guys. Deshaun Watson can do it, and Deshaun Watson's floor is very high, and for Deshaun Watson, and if you go back and you look at, albeit a small sample size, Deshaun Watson was a QB1 in points per game weekly while he was playing and while he was healthy. I want to say that he had at least four or five weeks where Deshaun Watson was right up there as a QB1 territory. Pretty impressive. So if he can put it together, hold on to the job, stay out of trouble, Deshaun Watson would be a buy that I'm very interested in. And he costs less than like a Bryce Young. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what we're doing here, leave us a like, subscribe to the channel, comment on the video. Let me know. Are there any other quarterbacks? quarterbacks that I missed. Anybody else that you're highly interested in? And are you buying into this Russian quarterback? There's a reason they called it the Konami code. It's a cheat code. It's free. And if you like what we're doing over here, come support us on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash South Harmon. We got tiers for everybody. $1 tier if you just want to get in the door, you want the discord, you want access and, and to talk to us, ask trade questions, trade advice. $5 tier if you want to show off those trades, be on the Dynasty Trade Show, which comes out on Saturday. $8 tier, get you the advanced data. Get Get you smarter people than I who make spreadsheets, Dynasty Berry, Koopa, making all these good analytical spreadsheets, all this good data points where we're really diving into it. And then if you're a psychopath, you're a real degen, the Savage tier. Prime access to me and Adam, prime access to the rest of the community, talking strategy nonstop. And of course, shit posting. That's all I got for you here. Really appreciate your time. Thank you everybody for listening and go get you some Russian quarterbacks. Till next time, I'm out of here. Peace.